Three years after becoming disabled, it's the best thing that has ever happened to me. Nearly three years to this day, as a 19-year-old, I was at my friend's birthday party when I smoked what I thought was weed. It wasn't, it was some synthetic plastic shit. I blacked out after a head spin, then I woke up a four-hour flight away in a hospital with no idea what's going on. Turns out I jumped off the fifth-story balcony, snapped my left humerus, four vertebrae burst fractures that damaged my spinal cord, and a fractured pelvis. Over the next six months of rehab, it changed me. I went from being a 19-year-old that didn't think about others to someone that can empathize and understand from other people's problems. All I want to do is help. I won't be able to walk again or go to the toilet normally, but in the last three years, I got engaged, got into our Wheelchair National Tennis Academy, and I'm about to start a business that helps young people with disabilities accept themselves. I'm proud of who I've become, and I wouldn't change anything. A lady refused to cut my hair based on my appearance. For context, I like to wear my clothes until they're worn out. I have money, but I don't really spend it unless I really want to or need to. Money usually goes towards my groceries, bills, etc. My clothes don't look torn apart, but you can tell they're old. I wear old pants, old shoes, old shirts, all clean, just well-worn. I decided to go to a salon for the first time just out of curiosity. I usually cut my own hair, but I wanted to try something new. I signed in, sat down, and waited. The lady, who I assumed was going to be the original person to cut my hair, takes a glance at me and turns around to one of her coworkers. Without even lowering her voice, tells her I'm not cutting her hair. I walked in with very clean hair. I was clean. My hair is kind of short, and it was all brushed out and good before I walked in. She continued telling me she didn't want to cut my hair because I was cheap and was thought she'd be lucky to get free stuff out here. I didn't know they did free things for newcomers anyway. I just wanted a haircut, you know? Well, her coworker cuts my hair instead. We have a nice talk, and I end up with a lovely haircut. She was one of the sweetest people I've ever met. On top of paying for my haircut, I look at her and tell her, Here, I want you to have this. This is yours. Don't give it to anyone else. And give her a $50 tip. The other woman saw all that and looked angry as hell. The lady who cut my hair thanked me and she looked overjoyed. That was the best $50 I've ever spent. Seeing the first woman's angry expression made my whole year. I'm not so cheap after all, huh? I psychologically tortured my roommate by throwing off how his brain responds to his alarm clock because he was stealing booze and was a shitty roommate. I was in college, senior. My roommate was a sophomore, but it was his first time living in a dorm. He'd been a pretty lousy roommate, constantly left the room a mess, left his stuff on my side of the room and on my bed, stole my alcohol, used my shit without my permission, never cleaned up my dishes after he used them, and a bunch of other stuff. I confronted him about all these issues on several occasions and got the resident advisor involved with the alcohol stealing issue because at the time he was under 21. Things still continued anyways. He asked me if I was okay if his girl spent the night, which I said no. We were in the middle of a pandemic, plus that's especially weird if I was there. I also had to wake up every day at 8 for work, which he knew, and he would stay up until 2 a.m. playing video games some nights. Not to mention, he would set like 10 alarms in the morning with a bunch of different alarm tones. I hit a breaking point and decided to do something cool. Every morning when I woke up, I'd observe his alarm pattern and how he'd respond. He had several alarms that he'd ignore, all with the same sound. He had a couple half-hour alarms that had a unique sound, also ignored. And then the final alarm had its own sound too. All of them were default iPhone sounds. So his brain had been trained to this alarm pattern for a while, I'd assumed. So I started step one of the punishment. Set up a sequence of alarms on my phone, identical to his sequence, but an hour early. He responded to my alarms the exact same way he'd respond to his own. I kept this up for a week, and his brain was eventually retrained to sleep through the double amount of alarms as before. Then, phase two kicked in. Random inconsistencies in my alarm pattern. Some days I'd play all the alarms, while the other days I'd only play one that his brain was trained to ignore. That way, his brain expects to sleep through like 20 alarms and only ever hears 11. He slept through his alarms at least four times in two weeks. Eventually, he finally changed his alarm pattern so he'd only have one alarm and he no longer had the energy to stay up until 2 a.m. I, 26 male, beat the shit out of my sister, 23 female, for sexually harassing my boyfriend, 25 male. I can finally talk about this because all the legal proceedings have been dealt with. So I've been dating my boyfriend, Mark, for about five years. He's the best thing that's ever happened to me. He's kind, smart, understanding, and absolutely beautiful. When we started dating, he was a bit closed off and was afraid to initiate any form of intimacy. I at first thought it was because I was his first relationship and maybe he was nervous. Six months into us dating, he tells me that between the ages of 5 and 12, he was sexually assaulted and raped by his mother. His father left when he was around 4. It fucked him up in the head for a while and when it got out, his mother was arrested, he and his two older sisters were put in the custody of their grandparents who they lived with ever since. 
He was placed into intensive therapy and still goes to this day. He came a long way and was healed a lot, but he still has some days where he gets really depressed and cries. Part of his therapy was exercising, so about two years ago, he and I started doing some bodybuilding workouts. I toned up a lot, put 20 extra pounds of muscle on, and he toned up a bit. Because we've been dating for so long and have marriage in mind, he told my family a less detailed version, and they welcomed him with love and support. Now for my sister, Sally. I've suspected she's had a big crush on him. She'll flirt sometimes here and there, but he never reciprocated and usually ignored her. I've talked to her about it so many times, but she didn't listen. To make a long story short, I had gone out one Saturday afternoon with some friends to get some drinks and left Mark behind because he didn't feel like going. My sister had texted me prior to ask if she could borrow a few things from me, a sweatshirt, DSLR camera, a third thing that doesn't come to mind at the moment. I said sure and to get it whenever. She went when I was out unknowingly. When I came home, I found my boyfriend on the ground crying his eyes out and my sister trying to calm him down. He was having a panic attack. It's never safe to touch him when he has an episode because he may act out violently due to his headspace. Her hands were all over him and he was trying to push her away. Her shirt was also on the ground and she was only in her bra. I tore her away and asked what the fuck she was doing. She said she was trying on the sweatshirt when he walked in on her, freaked out, and went into an episode. However, Mark, through his tears, said that she tried to touch him. I asked my sister if it was true, and she said no, but Mark again said she tried to touch him. I can't remember much because cameras I was in the house so angry, and I pointed it out to my sister. Her. her face went white, and I don't know what came over me, but I saw red. I can't remember if I was the one who called 911 or her through her beat-up state. I do remember kind of snapping out of it because Mark was still going through his episode, and I could hear him cry louder, and I had to help him through it all. It's all a haze. I broke my sister's nose, gave her a black eye, and bruised her ribs. She was in the hospital for a few days. I ruined a marriage and my family for revenge. I've always been the black sheep of the family. Cousins grew up to be doctors, professors, creatives, and whatever else. Meanwhile, I've managed to just make a humble, stable passive income through some business decisions, nothing fancy, but I can afford a one-bedroom in New York City, and live comfortably with that and a part-time job in a cafe. Everyone in the family, including my own parents, judge me harshly for not pushing myself to do what my cousins do, especially my one cousin we will call Randy. Think the stereotypical dude bro who got rich thanks to working for his dad, multiply that by 10, and you get Randy. Anyway, he also gave me the most shit, and eventually I just tune them out because I get to enjoy my life with my significant other, work part-time, and still afford what I want. So to cut the bullshit short, Randy has a wife and two kids. He also had a mistress. I found this out because one day when I was walking through the city, when I saw him walking down the street with a woman who clearly wasn't his wife, arms around each other. I checked Facebook and saw he had indeed posted about visiting a bagel shop in the city while on a business trip that morning, so we had indeed in the city. So I decided to fuck it, let me see how this plays out. I followed them for five hours, snapped several photos, one of them going into a hotel together. I held on to these and waited until Christmas that year, about six months later. I decided to unceremoniously drop the printed photos in front of everybody at the table before dinner and made sure his wife got to see them. Cue screaming and fighting, I actually got a black eye out of it. It was Randy's dad who did it though, not him. Cue police, a lot of questioning, my significant other and I get kicked out, we head back home after talking to the cops one last time. The aftermath, besides Randy's wife and another cousin who hates Randy, my family cut me off entirely for several years. Whatever. Even my parents had always expressed disappointment in me for not applying myself fully, so no real loss there. Randy got divorced, lost full custody of the kids after threatening his ex. Family occasionally tries to guilt me into apologizing, but my response is some variation of not going to apologize for outing a cheating cunt, and I'm promptly blocked for another few months. Significant other and I got married, and that's when my family last tried to get in contact with me and were actually nice for once. Seeing me moving on, I guess, eats at them. I don't know. Maybe realizing their punching bag is gone for good. That's it, really. Living my best life now with a good family as opposed to a shit one. I, 24 male, was getting a massage from a local physiotherapy wellness clinic. I've been very comfortable there as everyone seemed very professional and gave excellent massages. I've come here almost 10 times and always felt amazing afterwards. Today was different, though. Usually when I'm getting the massage, I'm always a little turned on, but this time around, this massage therapist, who was a lady, pressed my glutes more than normal, which admittedly felt good. I'm a pretty vulnerable person, so when a physiotherapist is doing something, I just assume this is a long-time test technique and I should just be mature about everything and let my stress drift away. 
The more time that went on during this full body massage, the masseuse perhaps accidentally or on purpose, who knows, grazed past my package. Apologize and ask if it's okay. I said it's fine, no worries. Which she gives a surprise reaction and then proceeds to pull my boxers down and ask if I want it here too. It was such a good massage, I just agreed because I used to wonder what that was like back in my bachelor years, and after she finished, I just felt so dirty and ashamed. I've read things online if this is an extremely terrible thing to do. I saw some rich person forum saying it's not uncommon and not cheating, which is just how I'm justifying it was fine right now. I want to tell my wife, but she's pretty sensitive, so no good can come out of coming clean. I'm just looking for the justification that what happened is not a big deal. Everyone does it, and de-stressing takes many forms. Oh, so you do pick up after yourself, and I'm just exaggerating? Let's give every man for himself a try, then. Years ago, when I just moved in with my then-boyfriend, now fiancé, he was terrible at picking up after himself. He was a self-admitted mama's boy and went directly from his parents' house to our shared home. Barely three weeks in, I was fed up, so when I told him that I was tired of picking up after him and acting as his maid, he hit me with, that's not true, we both clean up equally. After a bit of back and forth, he said, well, if you don't believe me, then let's split the house. You take care of your half, and I take care of mine. I took that literally. Got painter's tape, divided every single room in half, including the kitchen counter, the inside of the fridge, the bathroom counter. And he was cocky and suggested two months, I shortened it to one. Not even a week in, his half looked like a pigsty, and he had no more food because I stopped grocery shopping and cooking for him. The only exception I made was cleaning the toilet and shower because I was not able to use a filthy bathroom to make a point. He bought me flowers and chocolate, apologized for his behavior, and started learning how to be an adult. We are eight years into this relationship, and he is an amazing man. We are about to get married. I feel like I'm a pretty cool dad. I wouldn't say I'm anything special, but I'm super easygoing, supportive, and encouraging towards my teen boys. For the last few years, Josh, my youngest son now 14, has been playing pranks and jokes on me and editing the videos and my responses to show his friends. He's even put some on YouTube, but they've never really taken off to the extent that he had hoped. Everything has been fairly harmless, and I've never had an issue being the brunt of his pranks. I have, though, been secretly plotting my revenge. About six months ago, I contacted a TV network in my home country, which put me in touch with the producers of a popular prank show aimed at kids. After much back and forth and a few telephone calls, the producers agreed that they would help me take my revenge on Josh in an elaborate, to-be-broadcasted prank that would see him, finally, as the protagonist. My eldest boy, Blake, 15, was in on the prank and was to play a part alongside some actors that the show was going to provide. Two days ago, one day before the intended prank, while Josh was staying at a friend's house, the TV producers and crew came to my house to set up all of their equipment, hidden cameras, and props for what was to be a home-haunting special for their Halloween broadcast. The episode will never be broadcast. Both Josh and his friend, who was also not in on the intended prank, came home none the wiser and spent the early afternoon on the Xbox in his room. As prank time approached, I made the excuse of having to go and pick up some takeaway, and it was during the time that the haunting was due to take place. I drove my car to the next street, pulled up, and was invited into the makeshift producer's gallery in a temporary building on a neighbor's property. Immediately, the crew sprang into action, rolling their cameras and coordinating their actors, my other son Blake, and their crew on the radios. I was paying attention to the presenter who was being filmed alongside me observing the prank that was about to unfold when all of a sudden I heard the words terminate, terminate, terminate scream from the seat beside me. I thought this was part of the show and giggled with delight as I took my attention off the presenter and faced the camera monitors next to me to watch the prank begin. To my absolute shock, the hidden cameras at home were showing my son and his friend engage in oral sex. I froze up for a moment and processed what was going on and ran back to the house where I was forced to intervene and tell Josh everything that was happening. I've never seen my kid so absolutely horrified in his life. He went pale, vomited everywhere, and cried uncontrollably for about two hours. His friend was equally distraught and I'd done my best to keep them as calm as possible while I tried to work out what to do. I'm not sure that I've done the right thing. Raccoon scare gone wrong. God, I cannot believe this is happening to me at this age. I, 19 female, just woke up at around 2 a.m. and had to use the washroom. This is actually kind of routine for me as I've always had to go to the bathroom at least once or twice during the night. However, my simple task wasn't so simple tonight. Now I should give you the layout of my home. My boyfriend and I live in a small studio cabin. It has a compost toilet and a little kitchenette with a big sink and the cat litter box is right beside it. So on with the story. 
I got out of bed and put on my hoodie to head outside so I could go into the main house on the property to use the washroom. However, since the outside light is motion activated, I didn't see the three raccoons right in front of my door. I've already had one bad experience with the raccoon on my front porch in front of the door and it being aggressive when I opened it. So when I saw the raccoons, I instantly freaked out and backed up into the house. The raccoons were eating the food out of the small green bin we keep outside because it smells bad and they weren't leaving. And apparently I had to pee really bad. I had 10 seconds before I could no longer hold it in. I tried to hop on top of the sink, but I was too short and couldn't get up without waking up my boyfriend. The 10 seconds passed and I couldn't hold it in any longer. So I tried to go over to the cat box because that would be better than just pissing myself. But I missed and got pissed all over the floor and around the box. My boyfriend hadn't woken up, so I panicked and grabbed two towels and cleaned up all the piss, took a sponge and cleaned the floor and litter mat that also got pee in it, all the while covered in piss myself. Once I was done, the raccoons of course left, so I took off the pee-soaked underwear and clothes, put on a new large shirt, and went inside to take a shower. I'm now laying in bed writing this, hoping to dear God my boyfriend never finds out. I can't believe this happened to me. The embarrassment is infinite. Me and my girlfriend exchange notes frequently. They never leave our phones or computers, and we trust each other on that. I like to mess around in Photoshop as a hobby, and oftentimes I use my girlfriend's news for practice. Change the lighting, remove and add things in the background. Sometimes I edit her into a Playboy cover for a laugh. A few days ago, I bought a new laptop, as my old one died some time ago. I installed Photoshop on it yesterday and wanted to mess around with it. I found some tutorials online about Photoshop tattoo removal and decided to give it a try. Seeing as I had no work the next day, I also decided to get high. I gathered some pics of my girlfriend and went to work. My girlfriend has a big tattoo on her upper chest, covering her collarbones and the upper part of her boobs, two smaller pieces on her hips, one between her shoulder blades, and some smaller ones on her legs and arms. When we met, she already had all the major ones, and she did two more while with me. It has never bothered me. I thought her tattoos are cool. But before falling for her, I never imagined myself to be with such a heavily tattooed girl, but I hadn't really thought about it since then. Now I edited the pictures, starting from the smaller tattoos and eventually getting rid of the big chest one. I followed a tutorial and made a damn good job in my opinion. I ended up doing three pics, and when I was admiring my work, I got very... Well, I got more than I ever had expected in my life. I've always considered my girlfriend's body to be a 10 out of 10. That combined with her wonderful personality made me fall in love quick and hard, and I didn't ever think to wonder how she would be if she didn't have tattoos. Well, now I know, and to me she would look infinitely better. Ultimate Stamp of Approval I'm a home health nurse in rural Pennsylvania, and one of my patients lives in a little village-type area on the edge of a bigger town. There's no parking for his apartment below a shop, and there's no street parking, but there is the little village post office right across the road, so I've been parking there. The post office parking lot can probably hold at least 20 cars, although there never seems to be a max of two people inside there at a time. Last week, as my nurse practitioner and I were leaving this guy's house, a postal worker popped her head out of the door and asked me if we were there to buy stamps. We said no, and she said we can't park there if we're not buying stamps. Cue malicious compliance. I went out to that person's house today, went inside the post office, and bought one single 58 cent stamp. Then I went across the road and saw my patient. I'm pretty sure it was the same clerk from last week, and I'm fairly certain she recognized me, and she asked just one single stamp? Yep. It was an April Fool's joke. You can hang up on 911 now. To begin, I wanted to share this with y'all because allergies are taken very seriously. Wondering if anyone else thinks this is something I should possibly take legal action on since I suffer from horrible anxiety and has caused me emotional distress, or if I should just say fuck them and try to relax. I work dinner shifts at a popular Italian restaurant in New York City. Never usually have any hiccups, was in a great mood. I'm checking in on a table that had just had the first few bites of their entrees. One of the customers starts itching at his face and holding his neck. There's no sesame in here, right? My heart fucking drops to my stomach when he says that he has a sesame seed allergy that I need to call 911 immediately. My whole section is watching this man convulse in his seat, gasping for air. I'm on the phone with 911 getting all of this man's information from his license as his wife was crying. His wife then asks me what I said his birthday was, and she says that's not right. His birthday is April 1st, between sobs. I relay that to the dispatcher and my manager. The kitchen and staff is fully freaking the fuck out. Just as the ambulance pulls in, they get in my face and start cackling, April Fools! 
I thought I was going to be in jail and have a dead body in front of me, dropped my apron, and walked out the front door. I can't believe they took it that far and haven't fully processed it. I'm 15 female and my father is 46 male. My dad left the family when I was 7 without any explanation. He just vanished one day and I've never seen him since. He left because of relationship issues with my mom. She was heartbroken and waited 5 years for him to return, but in the end filed for divorce. Thankfully, she's over him now. To be honest now, 8 years after he left, I barely have any memory of him. Only some resentment for the years of suffering he put my mom and sister, 19 female, through. They tried and tried to contact him, but he'd never respond. I can't remember his voice, personality, or even face much. Last week, he texted my mother and said he wanted to meet after eight years of disappearance. My mom agreed. We arranged a meetup at a nearby restaurant. My sister was so nervous and excited, but I realized I felt nearly nothing. He arrived, and my mom and sister started crying. He cried, too, at the sight of his beloved daughters. He saw that I looked quite emotionless and said, don't you miss your dad? I replied honestly that I didn't even remember him. He left so long, it's like I barely knew him. He was so shocked and hurt. Eventually, he cut off our meetup early, claiming he had to work. My mom and sister were so mad, they blamed it on me. My mom said that my sister's been waiting to see her dad for so long, but I had to make a stupid remark and make him leave a second time. Asking how I could behave like this towards my dad, telling me that I'm a selfish bitch and an asshole. I'm sorry that he cut the meeting short, because I knew my sister missed him so damn much, but to be honest, I don't feel bad for saying the truth. I was wasting time on Reddit and found the perfect one. Easy setup, little cleanup, and dumb. It was perfect. I was home alone that day, so I grabbed some farfalle pasta from the pantry. I wanted a good crunch and got to work. I knew chances of my prank happening anytime soon were slim, as our master bathroom is slightly out of the way and my fiancé typically goes for the guest bath. That's okay, though. I'm a patient person. As soon as she got home from work, our son wanted to go play soccer outside. So we all go out and play for a while before coming back inside and having dinner. After drinking a bunch of water outside, coupled with a glass of wine with dinner, nature called. So naturally, I go into our bedroom, having completely forgotten what I did to the toilet. I jumped. The crunch. The feeling. The noise. The panic. Can confirm, this prank is a good one. I got myself. I chuckled and went out into the living room to tell her what had just happened, but was greeted by an empty room. By some kind of twisted luck, she had gone into a different part of the house while I had seemingly shattered the toilet with my ass, saving me from embarrassment. The temptation to go back into the kitchen and grab the farfalle was too great. I practically leapt across the living room and into the kitchen, grabbed the pasta box, and made my way stealthily back to the toilet. I quickly cleaned up the remnants of the last farfalle explosion from the floor, carelessly sweeping some stubborn pieces under the rug. I lined up another dozen pieces of pasta along the toilet rim and gently positioned the seat on top. The trap was set. I threw the farfalle box into our closet. The only time my fiancé ever uses our bathroom is in the morning or before bed. I had hours of waiting, again trying not to fuck this up and prank myself for the second time. It's around midnight at this point and finally, a solid six hours later, it's time for bed. I am giddy. I wait. I hear what sounds like God himself stepping on a porcelain toilet and surprise yelp from our bathroom. I remain silent. Oh, you fucker. I'm crying. I can't breathe. Something about having pranked myself and knowing the absolute panic she had just felt sent me into a fit. At some point, I regained just enough composure to relay my endeavors in their entirety. She is impressed and also thinks I'm an idiot. Still wants to marry me, though. It's so my female 19 sister, female 28, and brother-in-law came over with the kids for dinner at my parents' house. I was watching my nieces while dinner was getting ready. We sat down, and I happened to sit next to my brother-in-law. I was wearing a skirt, and it was accidentally lifted above my knee. My brother-in-law looked down at my leg and made a face and loudly said, Oh, shoo! Oh, this is gross. You should have shaved. That hair isn't supposed to be there. I told him, if it's not supposed to be there, then why does it grow there? Can you explain? And he was like, it's just not supposed to be there. I point at his mustache and say, well, I guess the same thing can be said about your little mustache then, huh? He looks at me, eyes wide open, and awkward silence takes over, though some laughed. My sister told me to knock it off as my brother-in-law got up from his chair and went inside the bathroom. My sister followed, and I could hear him having a breakdown, asking her if there was something wrong with his mustache. My brother and I kept giggling, but dinner got cut short because my brother-in-law wanted to leave. I later got scolded by my sister, saying I stepped over the line and disrespected someone who's older than me, who's her husband, and demanded I apologize to him for insulting him and ruining dinner. 
Am I in trouble for refusing to cooperate with the hospital as ex's emergency contact? Three years ago, I was in a relationship. He was abusive, did some really deplorable things I found out about later. I made a report, got a restraining order, and haven't spoken to him or anyone that knows him in three years. A week ago, he was in an accident. His phone was destroyed and could not be accessed, but he had some information in his wallet. He still had me as his emergency contact. I was not aware he had added me as his emergency contact at any point. I got a call Monday from an unknown number. It was someone from a hospital. They started telling me my ex was in a serious accident. I immediately cut them off and said, I don't care who this is, do not contact me again. They called back and asked if I could help them get in contact with someone else. At least I think that's what they wanted. I didn't let them finish. I cut them off pretty fast and said, I don't care, I hope he dies, do not contact me again, and hung up again. His sister, we were friendly, but I cut contact after the breakup, messaged me yesterday only letting me know that their family hired a lawyer to sue me for refusing to take the hospital's call, causing a delay in his treatment. He also had some allergies and medical details that they didn't know about, which caused complications and skyrocketed his medical bills. I had no idea about either. Am I in any kind of trouble here? My father was recently questioned by a cop regarding a 45-year-old cold case for a missing woman. He's not a suspect, but a few days later, another police officer called him and asked him to come into the station to discuss it further. Should he lawyer up? I feel like I answered my own question with the title, but wants to know if I'm being paranoid or not. My father had an acquaintance, 17-year-old girl, he was a few years older, who went missing in the late 1970s. She was never found, and the case has been completely unsolved since. The other day, my parents got a knock on the door, and it was a detective who asked to speak with my father. From what my dad told me, he essentially asked for all of my father's recollections about this woman. My dad told the cop everything he remembered about the woman, which isn't much, and the cop left without saying anything happening. The cop did tell my dad why he paid the visit, which is apparently because one of my dad's former friends called the police station and said my dad might have information about her disappearance. This former friend is a nut and a conspiracy theorist who has an axe to grind against my dad, so we think he's just trying to screw with my dad by sissing up the cops on him for no reason. Another officer called my dad today and asked him to come down to the station this coming Friday morning. We had no idea why. They apparently just wanted to discuss it further with him. I'm going to call the State's Bar Association tomorrow to get in touch with a criminal defense lawyer. I don't know if I'm being paranoid or not, but the whole thing reeks to me and I admittedly don't trust the cops in general. I basically don't want my dad to get screwed. Is it too much to go in with a lawyer for something like this? Long story short, we have been together for close to eight years and have two children together. We've been having relationship problems for the past year or so. Nothing ever got physical, just all verbally. Last month, she had enough and decided to file a restraining order on me as the only way to get out of the house. The house is mine. I bought it in 2018 while we were on one of our breaks. Our relationship is done, so I have no problem with that, but now I'm stuck out of my home and still have to make all the payments while she's living there. My attorney says the only way to get her out if she won't willingly leave is to evict her. I don't want to, but that's the only way. My mother-in-law is horribly persistent at feeding us spoiled food every time we visit. What can I do? So my mother-in-law is roughly 62. She's the type of person that'll always know better, so it's best to not discuss anything we do because she'll give us crappy advice and tell us we're doing everything wrong, which is incredibly frustrating. But that's not exactly the main issue in today's post. It's really just one of the reasons for why I think it happens. It's also important to add that we're struggling with being assertive and want to avoid conflict at all costs. My mother-in-law is very devoted to saving every penny. I can respect that, but she goes beyond respectable. She will always buy tons of food that are on sale because they'll be going bad in a day. Later, she refuses to throw it out. She'll always try to mix spoiled food and whatever she cooks, so her food is always disgusting and it hardly ever happens that it can be called edible. Often it'll give us stomach problems and make us nauseous. That's how disgusting it is. If she sees mold on something, she'll cut off the visible part and put the rest in whatever food she makes. She refuses to dispose of anything that goes bad, and as a last resort, she gives it to her dogs. But before that, she'll try to force every family member to eat it. And I do mean force. She won't just politely offer. She'll emotionally bully you into eating it. Throw back to a week ago, we visited her on Sunday because she was complaining for weeks that we don't spend time with her. Normally, for the sake of my mental health, my boyfriend will make excuses for why we can't come, but sometimes he'll just give in to get it over with. So now we let her know the day before that we have tons of leftovers at home and ask her not to cook. When we arrive, she's standing in the kitchen making soup. First thing she does is ask us if we want to eat. 
Yeah, like she cares if we actually want to. To which we respond that no, we don't. We just have eaten sandwiches and have leftover lasagna at home. She becomes agitated and asks us, why are you doing this to me? I told you I want to cook for you. Are you doing this on purpose? We politely tell her that we just have too much at home and it'll go bad if we don't eat it. Of course, that doesn't seem to be a problem to her. She said that we could eat it in a couple of days because at worst, it'll grow a little bit of mold that we can easily cut off. My mother was found by a neighbor drunk on the sidewalk. When I arrived home from work today, a neighbor came up to me to tell me that she found my mom laying on the sidewalk of our apartment complex. My mother had fallen and couldn't get herself back up. She was very, very drunk. Bit of a backstory. My mom was addicted to drugs and crack when I was a kid through adulthood. It got out of control and she gave me to my grandparents when I was about 10. She was in and out of my life from that point on. I'm 33 now, she is 63. She's asked to live with me about four times in the last 14 years, 2010, 2012, 2016, and 2019. Each time, I've accepted it. She's been living with me now since 2019, the longest she's ever gone clean from drugs. But she drinks. It wasn't bad until December of 2021 when I asked her to move because things were so bad between her and my oldest son. I've worked a lot through my trauma, but I still have a ways to go. Obviously, I'm pretty codependent. I've always wanted to save her. I really thought I could. I wish I didn't have so much trauma and could get over it all and let her in emotionally and help her bond with my children, ages 11 and 9 and help her have a good life with love and affection and all the things we all need to thrive in life. But I can't. I have my walls up with her, but I make sure I spend time with her. I'm a single working mom, my plate's full, so it's not a lot, but I try. We go to bingo, get pedicures, go to brunch. I feel like I'm drowning, I feel like I failed her. During our argument today, after I told her that I didn't want to talk about this tonight, she told me that I don't nurture her. I told her she wasn't my child. I feel awful, she is so alone and hurting. I can't help her anymore, I can't take care of her too, when I also have two kids and a job and a stable, secure life to maintain with my children. I don't want to kick my mom out. She'll probably end up back on drugs, and this time she'll die. My wife baby trapped me. So my wife, 32 female, and I, 34 male, have been together for eight years. We have a little girl, five female, and a baby boy, two male. I love both of them more than anything, and I feel like I have everything. A beautiful wife, two healthy kids, a great career, and a big house. The token American dream minus the dog. I'm allergic. When we talked about kids before, my wife always said she wanted two. I only wanted one. It would be easier and we'd have more money for vacations and stuff, but my wife maintained it's important for a child to have a sibling. I grew up with four and my wife with none, so I guess I understand where she's coming from. After our son and getting through the baby years and sleepless nights for the second time, I didn't want to ever go through that again. Both kids were very fussy and colicky, but when he was a year old, my wife began casually mentioning a third. I would laugh it off, but she finally sat me down and said we have to have a third. I said no. We agreed on two, but she wanted four, and three is the compromise. I refused and said I wanted one, and we have two. She got angry and called me selfish for taking away her dream of wanting a big family. A couple days later, she apologized and we had sex. I noticed her drive increase exponentially, but so did mine, and I was happy to engage her. She was on birth control, I had a condom. It was all good. Thinking back on it, I probably should have figured something was up, but I was barely handling two little kids and work on top of housework and yard work and everything. I came home from work one day while the kids were at their grandparents. My wife had a huge smile on her face, and she sat me down and showed me a positive pregnancy test, literally dancing in joy. My first thought was, oh shit. My wife noticed a less than happy expression on my face and started screaming at me. She berated me for not being supportive and this is a miracle from God and I should be grateful. I said I was sorry and hugged her and said that I was super excited for the baby. My wife was delighted and later that night she was calling all family and friends to happily tell them the news. When she was talking about the nursery and how we'll convert my office into a room, I started to get a little suspicious. Everything was so well thought out and it seemed like she'd been planning this for a while. When she was asleep, I took the condoms out of the cupboard and ran them underwater. Holes. I nabbed her phone and saw she'd set a password. That was all. Nevertheless, my wife has a terrible memory, so I tried her birthday and it opened. Further up were text messages from her best friend of my wife, complaining how I wouldn't come around. Her best friend suggested arrange an accident with a winky face. My wife agreed and said she was going to come off of birth control. We went on for a little while, ending with my wife saying yes, we were going to have a third. So I woke her up immediately and asked if this had really been a miracle. She got that deer in the headlights look and burst into tears. She wailed and then she got angry. Through tears she screamed, I had no right to go through her phone and it's her choice whether or not she wants to take birth control. 
The side effects are bad and she was sick. She also brought up if I really didn't want a third kid, I should have had a vasectomy. She told me to go sleep on the couch. I laughed out loud and said, no, I'm sleeping here, you're leaving. So while wailing, she packed a bag and left it to her parents. When she called the next day, I told her I just need some time to myself. She said that's fine, but I need to come around for our child. I told her I wasn't sure if it would be our child and she cried more. It's been two weeks since then. Government recommends to stay at home and I knew staying home by myself while also working with two kids would not be ideal and she would want to see her kids. So we're in the same house. She constantly keeps on stopping me and trying to get me excited for our kid and planning the nursery and names and how happy our kids will be to get a younger sibling. I've been ignoring her entirely. What do I do? Staying home with her is bad enough and I don't know if I should leave her over this. I don't trust her anymore. She's entirely betrayed it. I'm angry. But I have another child on the way. I'm supposed to be getting married early October 2022. It's not going to be a big wedding or anything, but me and my fiance both have friends that we don't want to leave out. I have this friend, Amanda. We've known each other since high school and we aren't incredibly close by any means, but we are still somewhat good friends and hang out regularly and I would like her to be there. My problem is I just recently found out she is now dating and she wants to bring him as her plus one. My sister Lily and her ex Steve broke up almost 10 months ago because she found out he was cheating. She was heartbroken and I know along with that she still has a lot of resentment for him and doesn't even like hearing his name. He was a shit boyfriend so my family has no problem with him no longer being in our lives. Eight months ago, Amanda told me she started talking to someone and she really liked him and everything. She wouldn't tell me who, not even his name, because she said she didn't want to share anything about him till it got more serious. I didn't really understand the secrecy, but didn't force her to tell me anything and just let her know I was happy for her and hope it all worked out. But last week, she told me she was dating Steve. They had gotten more serious and she wanted to make their relationship public to the people that they care about. She also said she knew how much I disliked him and what he had done to my sister, and I hoped I would try to understand their love and be happy for her and try to see him in a different light. I was a little shocked at first, since I didn't really expect her to be with a guy like him, and she knew what kind of a person and boyfriend he was. But it isn't my place, and I told her that I'm happy she's happy, and that was that. Well, two days later, we are texting about the wedding and everything, and she mentions Steve being her plus one. I did not want him there, not only because I know my sister, who's my maid of honor, doesn't want him there, but also because I don't like him and neither does my fiancé. I immediately told her that Steve was not invited to the wedding. She was confused and I explained to her that I was sorry and I'm happy for her, but I didn't want him there. At first she thought it was just because my sister would be there and kept saying that they wouldn't even be near each other and it would be fine. But then I explained that with everything that happened, we didn't want him there. I said sorry again, but she kept saying how I don't want her to be happy, how I just want her to live in the past, how I want to punish her for finding love, stuff like that. None of that is true and I tried to tell her that, but she stopped responding. So now I'm left feeling like a complete asshole and I don't know if I should just let Steve come or not. For context, I, 28 female, inherited a holiday home from my grandma some time ago. I never really use it as it's roughly a five hour drive from London where I live. It's relevant to the story that the keys to the holiday home are on a rack with literally every other key to anything my boyfriend or I own. The holiday house has a security system hooked up to my phone when it detects someone on the property, camera turns on, and I can see them. My brother's boyfriend, 33 male, recently had his fourth child. Him and his wife currently live in a two-bedroom apartment. So three days ago, they were both over at mine and my boyfriend's house with all their kids. We were talking about anything and everything. I was holding the baby. My boyfriend's brother eventually mentioned how I have my holiday home and how it has more than enough space for him and his wife to raise their four kids. My exact response was, yeah, but I'm not going to let you live there, so... He went quiet after that and his wife started to collect their kids and their things. They left about 10 minutes after. My boyfriend hasn't said anything to me about the conversation, yet I'm feeling bad about my response because I know that they really do need the space. So fast forward to yesterday. I wake up for work and realize my boyfriend isn't in bed with me. Nothing out of the ordinary. He works from 8.30 a.m. When I'm finally able to walk out the door, I go to grab my keys and notice my holiday home's keys are gone. I look around for them, can't find them, so I call my boyfriend. First time he doesn't answer, second time he doesn't answer, third time he does. The conversation went, hey, have you seen my other house keys? Yes, I have them. Cool, why have you got them though? Grab them by accident. I'll return them when I'm back from work. I thought everything would be fine, so I continued with my day and went on to work. Midway through my work day, I get a notification from the house's security system. I open it and find my boyfriend, his brother, and his family all outside the door with a moving van in the back. I was fuming. 
When I got home, my boyfriend was already there, acting as if everything was normal. I started screaming at him, asking why the hell he'd move a family into my house without my permission. He tried to justify it and say he had to help his family. It honestly made me more angry. I told him that we were over and that he has one day to get his brother and his family out of my house or I would call the police on them all for trespass. That all happened around 6 yesterday, 14 hours ago. He hasn't called me or anything, but I fully intend to go through with my threat. But I know that they're struggling right now. My own friend convinced my husband that I cheated on him, he kicked me out of our house, and now she finally said she lied. I, 25 female, don't even know where to start because I'm devastated. She, 25 female, and I were best friends for over 10 years before this all happened. She was my sister, my friend, the person I trusted the most, but to her I was never anything. Because if I had meant something to her, she wouldn't have stabbed me in the back just because I married the man she wanted. And this is important because she did all this for that very reason. Eight years ago, we met my husband, 29 male, in college. We were in our first year, and he was the assistant to one of our professors. The three of us became very good friends until he and I started dating. At that time, she never told me that she had feelings for him, so I never questioned my relationship with him. During all these years, I trusted her with very important things about my husband and myself. The last thing was the most important that I ever told her, and that was that I'm pregnant. I even told her before I told my husband because I took the pregnancy test while I was with her because I trusted her with my whole life. When the test came back positive, we both cried because it was a planned baby. She seemed so happy that my chest hurts knowing that was all fake. Six months have passed since that day, and my husband started acting weird. He was always mad at me for absolutely no reason until I had enough and confronted him. He told me he's mad at me because he knows the truth. I asked him what he was talking about, and he showed me all the infidelity evidence he has. They were chats from a dating app between a man and me, and I used quotes because I never created that account. Someone else did and used my photos, photos that I had never posted and I only have on my phone. So it is impossible that someone has stolen them from my social media. In those chats, I told this man that I was pregnant and that I didn't know if it was his or my husband's. In those chats, I even talked to that man about recent sexual encounters while I was pregnant and things that no husband or wife wants to read about their partner. I told my husband that everything was fake and that I wanted to know where he got those screenshots and he told me that they were screenshots off my old phone, a phone that I supposedly used to talk to other men. He told me that my best friend told him everything because she couldn't look at him in the eye without knowing the truth. Apparently she knew about my infidelities and told him to look for evidence on my old phone, and he did, and that's why he was acting weird the last few weeks. Of course I told him that my friend is lying and she probably used my phone without me knowing to do that, that I never created my account and that I never slept with another man other than him in my whole life, but he didn't believe me. We had a fight and we called her to confront her, but all she said was that she was sorry but that she no longer wanted to keep lying to one friend to save the other's ass. We had a horrible fight, but she was as calm as a fucking psycho, insisting that I'm a cheater. I couldn't convince my husband that it's all a lie because the evidence indicates that I'm guilty. So he was furious and told me to pack my stuff and get out, that he wanted a divorce and a paternity test. I showed up to my cousin's wedding wearing an almost identical dress as the soon-to-be bride. So my 27 female, cousin 29 female, is soon getting married. The thing is, our families have been in no contact for the last 10 to 12 years because of some issues between our fathers. The feud recently came to an end because all the kids are grown up and we kind of want to keep our differences aside and enjoy the upcoming events. We all had a little reunion. The issue started with my cousin's engagement party. Now I want to highlight that I take good care of myself. I do yoga and dance to stay fit. On some special occasions, I love to dress up a lot. Makes me feel good and confident. My cousin is a doctor and due to her schedule, she has put on some weight. But I respect her because her profession is tougher than mine. I'm an engineer. For her engagement, I wore a nice beautiful peach colored gown. It wasn't a new one, this was a three-year-old gift from someone. We are Indians and brides generally prefer to wear lahangas or saris. Sorry if I screwed that up. <laughs> Even though we have reconciled as a family, my sister never involved me with her planning or anything related to her wedding and I was totally okay with that. When me and my mother arrived at the location of the event, all was good, but the bride was late, people from the groom's side welcomed us nicely, and I was feeling great. My cousin was almost two hours late, but when she arrived, with her two besties, I could feel the tension between us rising high. To my horror, she was wearing a peach-colored gown exactly like mine, but it was more glittery. Only the bottom part of her dress was slightly different. She went on without acknowledging my existence. My mom noticed me but told me to relax as it was an accident and to enjoy myself. She went ahead to help my auntie with further preparations. I took a seat in the corner with my other cousin. When I was talking to him, one of the bride's bestie came to talk. 
I thought she was there to invite me to join them, but she straight up told me to change my dress. I was speechless. I told her no because one, there was nothing else to wear, and two, my house was several kilometers away and it would take me almost two hours to do so. She started suggesting different options for buying a new dress or she could lend me some clothes. I firmly told her no. My mom and dad were unaware of all of this. She kept arguing with me but gave up. When the ceremony started, my cousin was looking fine and smiled at me because in the end, she was getting engaged to the love of her life. We both got lots of compliments and I thought the drama was over. But her friends kept giving me side eyes throughout the event and today one of them tried to contact me on Instagram. The most hurtful thing was the fact that there was an after party thrown by the bride and groom for all the cousins and their special friends, but I wasn't invited. So I've been single for a couple years now, out of a 10 year relationship. A complete Tinder noob. That shit wasn't a bad thing back when I was on the dating circuit. Suffice to say, I hate it. I had a few dozen matches but was a bit too depressed in the last two years to meet anyone. Keep in mind, I live alone in a foreign country and rarely get unsolicited calls or texts. I finally reach out to one of my matches from months ago, let's call her Lisa, and we start talking. Over the course of a couple weeks, I ask if she'd like to meet for drinks or dinner in her city. She obliges and it's happy days. We meet and have a great time. No awkward silences, just banter of a few beers and Tinder suddenly feels like a real-life conduit. Lisa's really cute, very pleasant, and just feels like a really nice girl. So we end the date, she walks me to the train station, and we part ways. Lisa, the waitress left an impression. Fuck it, I like her. I got a message the next day. Nothing romantic, just a simple greeting, and we spark up a combo that lasts the whole length of the day. We talk about life, travel, music, share YouTube songs, etc. I found out she likes Green Day and has always wanted to visit Ireland. I already have a ticket to see Green Day in Dublin this June. Keep in mind this is a two-hour flight from where I live. I say to myself, you know what, fuck it, life is short, I have cash, yellow. So after a lengthy chat the next day, I post it to her. Hey, you like Green Day? You've always wanted to visit Ireland? Well, I'm headed home there for a concert in June. I'll buy you a ticket and I can show you my home country, tour for a bit if you want and we can get the time off of work. I acknowledge it might sound a bit sudden and crazy, but emphasize there's no pressure. I just really enjoyed meeting her in yellow, etc. I bought the ticket and even saw her a screenshot of the receipt. No pressure, I can sell it easy, but it's there if you like. The next day, I get a response. Hey Gem, I checked in with work and yes, I can make the holidays. Regards, Renata. Renata? Renata is some random Polish woman I met at my local after the date and barely spoke to for an hour. I was pretty drunk by the time we met and she asked for my number. I completely forgot I even gave her my number and the nameless text I got the next day. It could have only been Lisa in my mind. It was actually Renata. Renata is nice, by the way, but fuck my life. I hadn't planned on going to Green Day and touring Ireland with her. This is my life right now, and I have no idea how to handle this situation. Context, my husband, 33, used to be unemployed for a year. He recently started a job at a warehouse. Yesterday, and while I was about to do the laundry, I grabbed his work pants and digged my hand into his pockets to empty them before putting it in the washing machine like I always do. My husband just happened to walk by, and when he saw me searching his pant pockets, he rushed in, yelling at me to put his pants down. I already had a folded piece of paper out, but he snatched it, then started screaming at me how I have no respect for his privacy and that I shouldn't be getting my hands on his things. I was genuinely dumbfounded. I told him to take it easy. I always do this before laundry. He lashed out saying I had no right and should have come to him and asked him first because he was worried about important documents getting lost like the one I pulled out. I said important documents shouldn't be inside his pockets and asked to see the paper, but he said he won't show me. I asked why, and he said I don't get to ask him jack shit after I disrespected his privacy. I almost laughed because what privacy does he have in his pockets? It wasn't like a stranger was digging into them. He refused to speak to me and later brought a new closet with a lock and moved his clothes inside of it. I asked if he was serious and he said that this will teach me to respect his privacy and deter my snooping. Then he went back to not speaking to me. I'm genuinely confused. Am I the asshole? My lawyer neighbor researched my wife, found nude photos, and showed them to the rest of the neighborhood. Is this legal? My wife was involved in a boating accident when a drunk boater ran her over about 12 years ago. The defense attorney found nude photos of my wife in her early 20s that ended up on the internet. He tried to use them against her during the trial. Apparently, my neighbor was using her job as a lawyer to search people in the neighborhood. I'm told that's how she found out about them. She showed them to a bunch of my neighbors. I'm extremely frustrated and my wife is embarrassed to step outside now. Did my neighbor break any laws? 
My husband, 33, and I, 31, used to have a two-income home, but in 2020, we've lost our home and one of our incomes, his. We moved into a smaller apartment, had to sell many things, and give up most of our costly habits. My husband has an expensive habit of going to the spa for a weekly massage session. We live in an urban area, so this stuff is ridiculously expensive. A single session is $250, and he has to have it every week, so that would be nearly $1,000 a month. I offered him to have his session at a regular spa, but no. He has to get it from that luxurious spa near the restaurant we used to go to, saying the lady who gives the massage is an expert and he's used to her. Problem is, I'm the only income earner and I'm struggling to make ends meet. I'm also pregnant and need to save money to prepare a nursery. I told him to cut his sessions, but he refused. I told him I won't be paying for them anymore and he said he'd get the money himself. Yesterday I checked and saw that he's been using my credit card for his sessions for a whole month and has maxed out completely. I found that out when I went shopping for baby essentials and the cashier said I had no money. I had to return everything, then went home and went off on him. I told him he maxed my card out and he made me look like an idiot at the store. He said he didn't tell me because he knew I'd have an issue with it. I demanded he pay me back the $1,000 he spent, but he refused. I yelled at him, calling him irresponsible, and he got upset and called me selfish and to stop playing victim, and that this is affecting us both since he's going to be a parent too, and it's stressful for him, and I keep dismissing his own needs as a human. I went upstairs and he went out. He started giving me silent, but I kept demanding the money back. He said I shouldn't expect it back since we're married, and that my money is technically his, and I should stop using his unemployment against him. My brother hacked into everything and is trying to control my life. I'm in my second year of undergrad at a state university in California, and I'm having an issue with my brother, who is in his late 20s and a computer engineer. That is relevant to my issue. As a side note, I know very little about computers other than basic Googling skills. My brother is a very type A person, very perfectionist and hardworking, often to the detriment of himself and others. He is a nice and positive person and is successful in the traditional sense, but he is very controlling and has a bit of an overblown ego. I'm a much more relaxed person and the two of us share very little in the way of interests or guiding philosophies. I'm a visual arts major who likes to draw and he's the type of person who watched Fight Club and thought that Taylor Durden was onto something. We get along but have hostilities. My brother resents the fact that I'm not like him and I don't look up to him as a role model. He's very fond of mocking my interests, hobbies, career plans, and he often talks literally about a plan for me in which I change my major to engineering and start taking his advice. When he brings this up now over the phone, I stop talking to him for whatever amount of days or weeks until he apologizes and we do it all over again. Two weeks ago, my brother made a joke referencing a piece of digital art I drew on my laptop. I didn't think anything of it until I realized that after the call ended, I never posted that piece of art anywhere, not even onto any cloud device. It had only been available on my physical laptop. I was nervous and downloaded malware bytes and it didn't find anything. Thinking back, I also recalled my brother making a joke about something I said to a friend privately on my Discord, which also was not publicly available. Checking Gmail and a few other websites I'm on that showed options, I discovered someone had been logging onto my accounts from an unfamiliar computer and had then been doing so for about a week. I called my brother about this and he laughed and told me that he had remote access to my computer and that he'd be checking up on everything I was doing from this point on. I told him that that was ridiculous and he basically laughed and said that people today have no reasonable expectation of privacy anyway. Without going into detail, I basically discovered that my brother literally has access to everything in my life. My bank account, school account, my art chat accounts, all the files on my computer. He has even referenced information that leads me to think that there is a very good chance of him having a camera or microphone in my room. He has been in my apartment in the last month and the only reason I think he might not is because I haven't been able to find it. There's nothing on my computer or cloud files or anything I'm even remotely embarrassed about. But the idea that my brother has all my information is terrible and I want him to stop. I don't feel comfortable in my apartment or using my computer or personal accounts anymore. I'm writing this from my school's library. I believe my neighbor next door may have been sold or used for citizenship. I have a next door neighbor who moved into the apartment next door to mine in June 2021 and has been a major nuisance. She's schizophrenic and is constantly screaming, banging, smoking, and loitering around the complex, playing her music and singing loudly, or screaming or talking at no one. She looks very unkempt constantly and mentally unwell based on her hygiene. I'm definitely empathetic to those with mental illness, but have had to make a couple of reports to her property manager asking if any action can be taken because she lives next door and has made the living situation tense for me and my partner and somewhat difficult to focus while working from home. Every time he said they will talk to her and her husband and the situation gets very, very marginally better for a small interval, but goes back to being just as bad very swiftly, so we've kind of given up and learned to live with it. 
Here's the thing with the husband. We were confused what husband the property manager was even referring to because when they first moved in, we saw a dude maybe once, but then never again for at least months. Eventually I started to notice the guy would come around maybe once every one or two weeks, get packages, then be gone almost as soon as he arrived. Whenever he was here, the woman was usually quiet and not being disruptive as usual. I saw the guy's name once or twice on packages, and a very close friend and I thought something might definitely be fishy with the situation, so we did some digging on the internet, and here's the deal. He was born in India, and according to Facebook, studied engineering at a couple colleges there, then most recently studied at a university in San Jose, California. So at some point, he immigrated to the US from India. He's listed as single on Facebook, and there's no trace of the wife anywhere on his socials. Strangely, a people search showed that he lives in Sunnyvale, near San Jose, but the apartment where the woman lives next to us in Oakland is about a 60 minute drive north. I recently read a comment on a post about family secrets in which someone mentioned that their uncle sold their schizophrenic aunt, his daughter, to someone outside the country so that they could get citizenship and everything kind of clicked for me. Their living space is very sparse and empty when I get glances inside, and it seems almost like this man might just be storing her there, but otherwise living, working, and properly dating elsewhere. If my suspicions are correct, it makes me wonder about the legality and morality, of course, of a clearly mentally unsound individual that has been potentially goaded or somehow forced or sold into a marriage like this for the sake of someone else's citizenship. I really can't think of many other scenarios this could be unless I'm missing something. Last year, my husband died in a car accident. We were separated for about a year prior, but not officially divorced, so I was named the administrator of his estate. I have my own home, and I'm financially independent. We had two children together. In late summer of last year, I learned that his parents were the beneficiaries and received a boatload of money. Since his death, his parents have told me that they have wanted to buy the home. I've been waiting for them to go through with the purchase since August. I've been paying the mortgage on his home ever since. In February, I warned them that I was sick of paying for two mortgages and that I needed them to go through with the purchase. They have dragged their feet ever since and told me that it was in their lawyer's hands and that they had no control. My lawyer had not received any kind of formal offer from them other than their lawyer stating that they were interested. Last week, I was approached by a gentleman willing to pay good money for the home. I warned them hoping it would make them move forward on their end, but they scoffed and told me that I need to just be patient and wait. It has been an entire year of waiting, of them letting me pay the mortgage on his home and support our children while they go on vacations, make large purchases, and pay off their debt with the life insurance. Am I the asshole for accepting an offer from someone that isn't them? is selling the home of their dead son wrong. My ex and I split when our daughter, 13, was about two, and have always had split custody 50-50. My ex remarried when our daughter was five and now has two younger kids. Her husband also has a son our daughter's age. I pay for a phone for her so she can keep in contact with both of us. She's smart with it, and it's never been an issue before. When she's at her mom's, she texts me quite a bit. She has cats here that she wants to be updated on, mostly. Anyway, I dropped her off at school on Monday, and her mom picked her up as usual. She texted me on and off through school and once more when she was picked up, but I didn't hear from her again that day. It was strange. She always messages me before bed, but I brushed it off. She's grown up. She'll stop texting me goodnight one day. On Tuesday, no messages again, so I shoot a text to her mom who doesn't reply. After school, I finally get a text from my daughter, which literally reads, Daddy, help. That's it. No response after I message her back. Obviously, I'm thinking 101 things. I text her mom and call her. No reply. So I hop in my car and drive over, and she's fine. Ish. She sees me, comes bolting out, asks if I can bring her home. I have a lot of questions, but apparently so does her stepdad. He comes storming out, asks what I think I'm doing, etc. It's their week, I shouldn't be picking her up yet. I explain my issue, he gets all big guy, and yells at my daughter for scaring me, which was not taken lightly by me. Anyway, turns out there was an electronics detox and all electronics have been locked away. My daughter got upset on Monday night and her stepbrother made fun of her, which continued through the next day at school. She snuck onto her phone when she got home to text me, but got caught and had it locked away further. Her mom got home a few minutes after the initial argument and I told her she shouldn't be doing something like this with my daughter without my approval. That phone is my property and I say she can use it to contact me if need be. Lock it up during the day if you must, but let her say goodnight at least. She apologized for that, but stuck by her husband and the fact that I shouldn't have just shown up. 